Welcome in. We're into leg two of the round of 16 of the Common Bowl Libertadores tournament with three games taking place this week on Tuesday, followed by three more on Wednesday and two on Thursday. Now, this is definitely a lower scoring tournament, as are many South American leagues. If we look at the group stage, only three teams played to more over 2.5 totals than unders. Two went four and two and only one went five and one. Seven teams were at even three and three. Two were two and four and four went one and five in those over-under bets. In leg one of the round of 16 last week, the under 2.5 went five and three. There were only two draws, but there were also two games that ended just one nothing. Now with some teams now knowing they need to win or attack, perhaps it's going to be a bit higher scoring this week in leg two, but I would still expect many close games. So let's get into this week's Copa Libertadores predictions. And while you're listening, if you find this info helpful, help me out, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to get more soccer predictions. Before you make your bets, be sure to check out signupexpert.com slash shred the spread. You can find that link in the comments of this video, and you can see a list of all the great new customer sportsbook promos in your area. Be sure to grab all of those free bonus bets that are available in all of those great offers that are out there. So let's, let's get started here with Fluminense and Gremio. Gremio won 2-1 to one in leg one. All the goals came late with Fluminense scoring in the 58th. Then Gremio tying on a PK in the 74th and scoring again in the 77th. They did take a red card soon after, so Rodrigo Eli will miss leg two. Gremio sit 15th in the Brazilian League, while Fluminense are 18th. Gremio has owned this matchup of late, winning 2-1 last week, 1-0 in June, 3-2 in December in each of the last eight games. Gremio lost 2-0 this weekend, but they have three losses, one of those being in PKs in their last 11. Their games have been tight, going 5-2 to the under 2.5. Fluminense drew nil-nil this weekend. They have one win in six. They've allowed multiple goals in three or four. They have four wins in nine, but none in their last four. And those are their only four wins in their last 19 games. Fluminense were three and three to over-unders in the group stage. Gremio was five and one to the under. So late ones over was a rare one for Gremio in this tournament. Gremio has owned this opponent, but in uh, road games in the Brazilian Serie A, they have only two wins in 10. They've conceded a goal in nine of 10. Now, this is a different competition, but a very familiar type of opponent. Let's bet on goals coming from both again here. Let's go both teams to score, plus 120. Next up, Atletico, Minero, San Lorenzo. Minero had 71% possession, but it was San Lorenzo who scored early in that game last week, 17 minutes in. They held that lead until Minero tied it in the 58th. And that game went on to end 1-1. San Lorenzo only managed two shots on target at home. So they are likely going to be hard-pressed to do much better on the road here. They are the 26th ranked team right now in Argentina. Meanwhile, Minero are 8th in Brazil. San Lorenzo lagging down there near the bottom of the Argentina League. Like we just said, this weekend they lost again 3-2 to to Boca Juniors. In all competitions, they're now winless in 6. They have just 5 wins in all competitions in 22 as well. The under 2.5 has gone 7-1 of late. Atletico Mineiro drew 1-1 this weekend. That's their third straight draw across all competitions. They have only one win in six, but they have just one loss in 10, and they have scored in nine of 10 and 14 of 16. They're still missing top scorer Hulk, who's out injured. Their 14 goals scored in the group stage was tied for the most at home here against one of Argentina's weaker teams. Let's go for an Atletico Mineiro to win. Not going to be great odds, but minus 165. Next up, Junior, Colo Colo. Colo Colo controlled this, the, their game last week with 59% possession, 16 shots to five, five shots on target to just one for Junior, scoring once for a 1-0 win. That goal came late in the game in the 76th minute. Colo Colo right now second in the Chile Premier Division, Junior seventh in the Colombia Categoria Primera A Division. Colo Colo have been rolling. They won 2-0 this weekend. They're undefeated in 10. They have only one loss in 16, only two losses in 21. Just twice in 16 games have they not scored, and they've scored multiple goals in 6 of 10, keeping clean sheets in each of their last three. Junior won 2-1 to one this weekend. On one hand, they have only one win in four and just three in 11. On the other hand, they have just three losses in 18. Their trend has been a ton of unders with the under 2.5 going 13-5 and five across all competitions. This game, too, could be tight. Under 2.5 went 5-1 and one in the group stage for Colo Colo, also 5-1 and one for Junior. Both of these teams saw their past six go to the under after last week's low-scoring game as well. This certainly could be another under for both. There won't be great odds at minus 211, but a draw could also do for Colo Colo, so at plus 220, that could be an option. They've been nearly unbeatable of late, so perhaps that double chance at minus 138 could be the best bet here. After all, these teams only combined for three wins together in the group stage, so they both only barely made it through. We'll go Colo Colo, double chance, that's the win or the draw, minus 138. Next up, the strongest, and Penarol. Penarol were big home favorites in Uruguay in leg one, and they didn't dis disappoint, scoring early and often 
in a 4 0 route. They had 61% possession. The edge in shots, 20 to 4, and shots on target, 10 to nothing. Penarol, right now, they're 11th in the Uruguay Premier Division, but you can't really judge much on that. They've only played one game as that just started this past weekend. The strongest, second in Bolivia, the Br Bolivia Premier Division, Clausura. Penarol drew 0 0 in Uruguay this weekend, and they now have only two losses in 20 in all competitions, and just one of those came in regulation. Uh, only twice in 26 games have they not scored at least one goal. The strongest had won 2-1 to one and 5 nothing in recent games, but after last week and then this weekend, they're now off 4 nothing and then 2 nothing losses, that 2 nothing being this weekend, but they have only four losses in 15, five losses in 21. The strongest is awful in this tournament away from the pass, but if you switch that over to home games, they've been historically good with only one loss in 13 and four in 37 over many, many years in this tournament. At home, in the Libertadores, they've scored in 13 straight, as well as in 42 of 43. That's a stat that I like here if we're going to be betting on some goals. They'll need a whole lot more, though, than one goal here to reverse leg one's deficit. Odds makers are expecting a Bolivian win here, as they will need it, and they will be at home. The win's priced at minus 250, and especially considering Penarol won't need to get the win here after a huge 4 nothing win in leg one. Penarol did, though, score 12 goals in six group stage games. And in before this uh, this round, meanwhile, the strongest only got zero shots on target in the last game. So even with less pressure on Penarol, I would still think they are capable of scoring as well. So let's go both teams to score, minus 125. And next up, River Plate, Talarez de Cordoba. Cordoba took a red card in the 60th minute. River Plate scored late in the 86th to secure the one nothing win. There was little offense in this game with River only having three shots on target and Cordoba only one. Talleres de Cordoba, they're fifth right now in Argentina. Meanwhile, River Plate are ninth in Argentina as well. In this all-Argentina matchup, the teams drew 2-2 in March. River Plate, River Plate won 1-0 in October in recent, other recent meetings. River Plate, though, only has two wins in seven recent meetings, though, now. Cordoba had four straight 1-1 draws before losing to River Plate 1-0 last week and then winning in the league 2-1 this weekend. That's their only win, though, in seven games, and the under is 5-1. River Plate drew 1-1 this weekend, giving them many draws as well. They've drawn in three of their last four games. They're undefeated in five, with only one loss in nine, scoring in eight of nine as well. River Plate tied for the fewest goals allowed in the group stage. I would expect this game to be tight as well. We'll go under 2.5 at minus 145. Now we have another all-Brazilian matchup here, Palmeiras and Botafogo. The scoring came rapid fire in the first half last week, with Botafogo scoring in the 22nd minute. Palmeiras leveling the 33rd, Botafogo making it 2-1 in the 39th. And that was it. Each team had just three shots on target. The game ended 2-1. Botafogo right now first in Brazil, Palmeiras third. Other recent meetings have seen Botafogo win 1-0 in July and Palmeiras 4-3 in November. After two losses, Botafogo now has 2-1 and then 4-1 wins this past weekend. They're 3-2 and 3-8, and but they have only three losses in 15 and four losses in 25. They've not kept any clean sheets in any of their past eight games. They have those scored in 18 of 20. Meanwhile, Palmeiras won 2-1 to one this weekend. They're now 2-2-4-8, two, two and four and eight, but they have just one loss in four. They've only kept one clean sheet themselves in their last eight games. But they, too, have scored in five straight, making both teams' score bets 4-1 and one in their games. Neither of these teams are keeping very many clean sheets. Palmeiras, at home, need to attack. They tied for the most goals scored during the group stage. We'll go both teams scoring this game at plus 105. Next up, Sao Paulo and Nacional. Nacional, with only 35% possession and 14 shot attempts, but just two on target and zero goals last week. Sao Paulo had all of the possession, but just two shot attempts, zero on target, zero goals. It was 0-0, zero, zero, nil, nil in leg one. Nacional de Football, they're fifth in Uruguay right now, but like we said earlier in the Uruguay League, it's only one game in, so basically everybody is about level here. Sao Paulo, they're sixth in Brazil right now. Nacional drew 3-3 with River Plate, the Uruguayan version of River Plate, this weekend. So they're now 15-4-3 in their last 22, scoring a goal in 20 of 22 having clean sheets in four of six. Prior to that 3-3 game, they had allowed just three goals in eight games. Sao Paulo lost 2-1 in the league this week in their first loss in five and the first goals they had given up in that time as well. Overall, they have just three losses in 15. They've kept clean sheets in five of six, but have only scored five goals in seven games and more than one goal only once in any of their last seven. Sao Paulo allowed the joint fewest goals during the group stage, that being three, and this should again be tight and low scoring in my opinion. I would say to bet the draw, plus 260 again, or the under 2.5 at minus 160. Let's go under 2.5, minus 160 odds. And finally, we have Bolivar and Flamengo. Flamengo controlled this game in Brazil in leg one with 64% possession, 19 shots, six on target, and two goals. Bolivar had six attempts, just one on target, 
and the game was 2 0 for Flamengo. Flamengo, our fourth in Brazil. Meanwhile, Bolivar, our Bolivia's top team right now in the Primera Division during the Clausura. In their group stage games, these teams played as well, and those games were won by Bolivia. Bolivar, 2 1 in Bolivia in April. Flamengo also won 4 0 in Brazil in May. And then Flamengo won in Brazil again last week in leg one. Bolivar were off this weekend, so they should be the more rested team sitting at home waiting for this game. Much like the strongest, they've been much better at home in this tournament. In 26 road Libertadores games, they have just five wins. But if we go back to La Paz, they have only four losses in 32, and they've scored in 32 of those 33 games. Overall, in all competitions, they're 10-4-4 in four, and four, and 18, and they've scored in 14 of 18. After winning last week, Flamengo lost 4-1 to, to Botafogo this weekend. Last week's win over Bolivar is their only win in five games. On the road, they've lost three straight and away in the Libertadores tournament over the last uh, little while. They've not won any of their past seven. Conceding in all seven, where both teams' score bets are 6-1. and one. Flamengo may be a bit stronger, but Bolivar always plays well at home. We just saw Bolivar win 2-1 to one in Bolivia in the group stage. And another game with goals from both could be in the cards here, in my opinion. Bolivar allowed the most goals, nine, of any team that advanced from the group stage. And their game saw the highest average goals per game at 3.7. And they were the highest over team at 5-1. and one. Those trends also continued last week in leg one. So I would say both teams to score at minus 145. Maybe the over 2.5, minus 134. Or you could combine those two at plus uh, 105 odds as well. That being the both teams to score over 2.5 will make the best bet in this game. Both teams to score are minus 145. Now, these games are all tight. I could see a lot of these ending at both teams to score, maybe, uh, or some draws or some unders. Those, I think, are all strong bets I've just laid out. But I think the best bets for me are always some of these simple parlays. I did three games under 3.5 last week. They easily could have gone on. They, many of them went under 2.5. I'm going to do the same three games again. Junior, Colo Colo, under 3.5. River Plate, Cordoba, under 3.5. Sao Paulo Nacional under 3.5. That would be minus 134. Certainly, if you lowered those all to minus 2.5, you'd certainly get much better odds. And very likely, most or all might fall under 2. I certainly think they'll all fall under 3.5. And one second one, that one just went all unders. We'll go all overs, but also just small overs over 1.5s here. The strongest and Panarel over 1.5. Palmeiras, Botafogo over 1.5. Bolivar, Flamengo over 1.5 coming in at plus 105 odds. So there's a few different options for you, whether you want to bet these games straight or a few simple looking parlays. Those are my Copa Libertadores bets for leg two this week. Let me know what you're betting in this tournament. Straight bets, parlays, teams to advance, anything else that you are betting in this tournament. Give the video a like on your way out to help me out. Stay tuned for more videos this week as well in the League's Cup, MLS, and European soccer this weekend.